Hey everyone, it is Dr. Dylan Peckis here with Optimal Circadian Health, and today we are going to dive into your questions in this Ask Me Anything. It's going to be about all about adrenal fatigue, gluten, veganism, snacks, B5. This is going to be a really great one for you to watch if you have this problem, so make sure that you stay tuned. Hey everyone, it is Dr. Dylan with Optimal Circadian Health, and today we're gonna get more casual. We're gonna have the back lighting like it's a red Christmas theme. I don't have green lights, um, but if I did, I would put a little Christmas theme back there. But the holidays are not the point of this. The point is adrenal fatigue. This is something that you know I, I asked you guys, like, hey, like what questions you have on this topic to be able to help you see, okay what's going on with this and be able to see where you guys are at and some of the the holes in your knowledge and being able to fill those up and be able to help you out so if you have any questions comment below i'm kidding don't do that because they get lost in the comments so make sure that you send us your questions over to our facebook messenger this is where we keep everything all there we know who sent what question and so you can go to m.me forward slash conquer dot fatigue and that will just if you put that into your web browser that will actually be something that takes you to facebook messenger pretty cool um or if you just want to use facebook messenger you can just contact our admin the conquer fatigue facebook profile so that being said let's dive into the most fun thing which i know you guys know this is coming because you're a big fan of what we do here but it is time for the disclaimer that is none of this is medical advice i'm not advising you to do anything i'm not suggesting you do anything i'm just providing information based on my opinion and research and experience do not use any of this without the oral consent of your prescribing healthcare provider i am not your healthcare provider neither does this episode replace a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a physician or other healthcare provider there. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's jump into the questions here. So, pregunta uno, does, you didn't know I spoke Spanish. Actually, those are like, don't, don't try me on that. I don't speak Spanish very well. But what I do do well is helping you guys learn. So, any questions you have, you know where to send them. Anything you're learning as you're watching this, make sure to you know either pen and paper or type in the comments if you're watching this on one of our social media outlets. That'll help it stick better with you and then with others as well. Knowing like okay, you know this this helps other people. So great, that's what we're all here to do. So cutting out gluten does this help? So that's just say gluten up there. So does cutting out gluten help when you have adrenal fatigue? maybe i don't know so the reason a lot of people will say this because when you have adrenal fatigue more often than not you're also going to have an issue with your gut that's what's going on but do you need to be focusing in on the gut not really a whole lot you do somewhat but being at this very hyper focused level of your you know gluten getting cut out isn't going to really solve the root problem so when we're thinking about okay adrenal fatigue a lot of people have gut issues. They're, they eat a meal and they're bloating or get bloated. Or you eat certain foods and you just get exhausted, which may be from your metabolism not being able to actually process these things. So that's why a lot of people, they'll eat, they feel a little bit better and then go right back down. Or some people eat and they just feel like nauseous. They have no appetite. Either way, is something of where you're starting to think, okay, the issues with my gut. And yes, there is, but just like like the core concept of what we help our clients with in Optimal Circadian Health is that, yes, there's all these different issues manifesting, but at the core, there, there's only so many issues and it may show up as gut. So when it's showing up in the gut here, then people will think, okay, I need to cut out gluten because either, you know, I, I think I have gluten sensitivity, I've gotten the testing done, and you know there's some truth to this 
you may have celiacs confirmed. My sister has confirmed celiacs. No, no real arguing around that. And for myself, um, I stopped eating bread before not eating bread was cool because I actually, my apartment was on top of a Subway sandwich shop. And if you smell bread every single day for months on end, you will hate it. So I guess I was lucky there. But with gluten here, the, the thinking is you have these gut cells and they get torn apart. All right. Why is this happening? Is it because the gluten is doing something dangerous? No, it's because your intestines are releasing something known as zonulin. This causes the cells to go boop, just breaks them right apart. And then all these different peptides will get in related to gluten, gliadin, uh, all the transamidases, those will kind of go to the wrong place and get picked up on a blood test. But here's here's the problem it's not so much the thing that's leaking through that's the problem it's the door being open and you may want to write this one down your gut is opening up and being leaky to help you yes to help you out how does that help it you need to understand how energy really works in your body and one of the most energetic, costly things is making new proteins and going from DNA and being able to make, you know, using those instructions to make the proteins in your cells that are going to allow you to have optimal function. Okay. So when you have leaky gut, guess what? You can let in more genetic material from your gut microbiome, from the foods that you're eating and their nucleic acids, which are the uh, units of DNA and RNA, even viruses that you're eating. Like if you're eating um, raw foods, or I mean really anything that's not cooked will have viruses on it just because there's viruses on everything, it's everywhere. That's just how life is. But your body is smarter than us and will select, it will open this door up to let more genetic material in, and then it will actually incorporate that into your own DNA. That's why most of the human genome, 99, 90 to 95% of it is junk DNA. It's non-coding DNA. Because even if you can't use the genetic material, guess what? You can more easily find the genes that you want. Okay, it may sound a little bit confusing, but essentially, if you were to think about, say you have a big like pile of papers, right? Like all your, your taxes, you're trying to do your taxes. And you have like a one form over here, you have your 1099C, your 1099A, your, 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 your W's, whatever's your, you know, if, I'm not sure what the name of the forms are outside of the US, but you have all this different paperwork. If you have all the paper just smushed on one part of the desk, yes, all the papers are closer, but it's also a harder mess because you like you don't have as much of an area, you're just like flipping around and you put a piece of paper over there and then you're creating that mess over there, it becomes this mess. But when you spread it out, when there's space between the essential documents and instructions, it's easier to find things. So say if I have all my, um, you know, my returns right here, and then I have some other paperwork over here on this side of the room, and then some other stuff over there, you know, it, it becomes something that's a lot easier to access. Same thing inside of your DNA. Because if we didn't have all this coding DNA, all the paperwork will be smushed together. Everything will just be And that takes a lot more energy to be able to properly find the right stuff. And then also to make copies of it, or really transcriptions of it from DNA to RNA, and then RNA to protein. And so when you're not able to find all the right paperwork that creates the right action inside the cell, that's when becomes, things become wildly inefficient inside of your cell. So leaky gut's not the problem. It does co cause problems its own way, but there's part of the solution coming in, more genetic material, and yes, you're also letting in other things that aren't as good, not just things related to gluten, even bacteria, other issues as well. But leaky gut is not the problem itself. So cutting out gluten will remove some of the insult of it, because you're letting less stuff across and these things are inflammatory, but you're still not causing the problem that, you know, 
this lack of energy inside your cells that is then telling your gut, hey, be leaky, we need more genetic material. That's what goes on. And then the other piece of this is that, yes, gluten will help. I mean, cutting it out, you know, it, that's not going to be the end all be all. It's the energy side as well. But how your cells communicate is dictated entirely by circadian rhythms and also other factors in your environment. And so if that's not optimized, then you could be having the best diet and still be in a place of where you have a leaky gut. I see it time and time again with people on the phone where they've, oh, my diet is absolutely dialed in, it's perfect, it's restrictive, it's great. Yeah, I'm still having gut issues. So is it really the food? Are you really prepared to go on this journey of cutting things out and trying this template and that template and not getting anywhere? Or do you wanna be able to be at that fundamental level, fix things where you can be at a point of where you can have some gluten and everything will be okay. Let's just face it, everyone. Our secret dark desire for many of us is just to have a freaking slice of pizza and be okay. And if it's not, I apologize for bringing my deepest, darkest secrets out to you. But your body should be able to handle these things. You should be resilient to them. And when you're having to cut things out, it's not just gluten. It's when you're at a, a holiday party and you're having to cut out the, the ability to just be there and have a steak and cookie. Or when you're out to restaurants and having to be, you know, super diligent and vigilant. Of like, oh, did, was this prepared on the same thing as, as, a, as a crumb? Or, you know, it, it just becomes this thing of where you're having all these restrictions in your life that don't need to be there because you're not addressing the real issues. So, yes, cutting out gluten will help a bit, but it's like having a car that's on fire and just getting the oil changed. It's not going to do a whole lot. So that's question number one. If you have your questions again, you can submit to us over here. Now, the, the next question, which I love, is being a vegan, does it hurt or help? Now, when I saw this post that this wasn't the actual question, someone was just saying that I'm vegan for six years, and that's why I just want to bring this to light. It can go both ways, honestly. We've had people on their breakthrough call. We have to have that discussion. Are you willing to to not be a vegan? I'm not saying you gotta like, you know, you know, do a bunch of heinous things against animals here. I'm just asking you if if you're open to having some animal products that could greatly facilitate your cellular health. And there are the ethics behind it. I get it. And I don't mean this to make the discussion about it, but one of the bi biggest ethics is how you're able to navigate your life. Because if you're not, if you're becoming a burden to someone, that is the most important ecosystem that is suffering. And just because you're gonna eat some animal products does not mean Like, you're going to contribute to this even greater and greater global burden. Okay. A small part of that bigger picture, but a huge, big burden and weight to the smaller ecosystem right in front of you. So being able to recognize that and then put it into the context. Okay. Because why do you become vegan in the first place? It's not because you're dumb. You're not. Okay, this is in no way to insult any vegans. And it's not because like you don't care about the environment or you haven't thought this out. It's because you know this can get you to a better outcome. But when you don't know that being a vegan can actually hurt your outcome, stick with me because it sometimes can help. Then that's when it becomes out of context. So veganism, why can that hurt or help? Okay, so it can hurt many times. Why, oh, why, oh, why? This is like a, a, a big thing we're gonna go into right here, right now. And one of the biggest things is deuterium. This is something where if you imagine a hydrogen, which is just a proton by itself, that's what goes through your mitochondria at the fundamental level, right? But if this hydrogen now has a neutron attached to it, now you have like, something double the weight. This is like having a revolving door that's designed to 
for a capacity of a 200 pound man and now you have someone who's 400 pounds trying to go through they're gonna get stuck and then hopefully see their the errors of their way and, and lose weight and be happy and healthy forever and this is also like if you imagine this proton as a golf ball deuterium is essentially like gluing two golf balls together and then go try to play 18 holes of golf it's going to be even worse than golf already is it's going to be even more boring even more frustrating even more agonizing i don't like golf if you can't tell so when you're eating a lot of plant foods plant foods actually have a higher amount of deuterium in them so this is why so many times on that first breakthrough call people will say oh i've been a vegan or a vegetarian for a long time a light bulb just goes off on my mind my oh my okay i know a big part of why this issue is here because when that deuterium is accumulating, that will slow things down inside your mitochondria. And that is the powerhouse of your cell making energy. Now, if you have so many other factors right, your routines are dialed in, what you're doing, when you're doing it, where you're doing it is all really, really awesome. You know, you can be vegan. You can. There are many people who thrive on this. But they have so many other factors, right, that you may not even like be appreciating. Because what do we do? We get told, oh, diet's the most important, plant-based. Harvard School of Medicine says plant-based is the best. Blah, 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 blah. But it's missing the bigger context of how humans in life live. And when you miss out on that, that's when you get thrown a diet or a promise with autoimmune. Or maybe you're eating a bunch of vegetable because Terry Wallace told you to. And not really getting anywhere or getting worse because not only is it the deuterium story, but it's all the energy intensive processes from that. Okay. Humans compared to cows, big gut, small gut. Humans have a small gut. Cows got a big gut. Your gut is not designed to really be energetically efficiently breaking down and fermenting all these things. And then that's going to cause issues with your gut. A lot of bloating, all that stuff. It's not going to be pretty. And then the other thing is all these phytochemicals that you're getting from these plants. They're good when your body can respond to it, but what's really responding it are to your mitochondria. And when your mitochondria can't benefit from a hormetic effect, what the heck is that? Hormesis is when a normal person exercises, they feel, you know, they're a little sore afterwards, but their body rebuilds and gets more resilient. A lack of hormesis or not being able to do so what is that that's when you work out or you have a stressful day and you crash and burn afterwards or you have something overwhelming and stressful and then you just crash and burn because of that that's a lack of ability to respond to a stressor that is you can't have a hormetic process so phytochemicals will do that but if it's just something where it wipes out all the free radicals it, it, it doesn't really do anything beneficial it calms the systems down, but it, it's not really something that allows the system to rebuild back up, which is what you want. You don't want to just stay in the same place. You want to be able to build, build, and get better. But if you don't, you're staying stuck. This is why. Because your body is not getting the proper cellular signal to rebuild and repair and boost its mitochondria. Okay? That's why, for the most part, being vegan hurts when you have adrenal fatigue just us. Got to tell you the truth. And now if you, if you hate me for ever saying this, that's fine. I'm here to tell you the truth. All right. Now, number three, snacks, yay or nay. All right. So snacks, this would be defined as what was the exact thing I saw? Oh, eating every three hours so that my metabolism stays boosted and uh, my blood sugar doesn't get too low or I forget the other rush. I don't get too hungry and stressed out is another one. So snacks, there is something that is detrimental to them. Well, it's really a catch 22 because your body becomes dependent on it. And it's just like if you were literally to be addicted to something. Now bear with me here. This is going to be a, this is going to be a cocaine analogy. So let's just, or does cocaine have withdrawals? Not as much. Let's just say heroin. Yeah, let's just take this really extreme. So with heroin, you take it, you feel great. It's obviously dangerous. Um, I haven't ever, I have not taken heroin, okay? I'm not saying that from a first person perspective. 
I would imagine there's a euphoric sensation when you take heroin, which is why people would do it. But they also take it because they get addicted to it. And there's these lows of where if you, you know, ever spoken to someone who has an addiction to this, like they need to hit, they need that. They like, otherwise they feel like crap. Same thing with snacks. Okay. Extreme analogy. But it brings the point home. Your body, because when you're in the state of adrenal fatigue, what that is really telling me is that your body can only burn sugar. It cannot burn fat. Does your body have sugar stores? Not really. Yes, you have glycogen and your liver and all that stuff. But here's the thing. That's not as easily freed up and liberated as say fat is. It's just not. So when you are in a place of where you can only burn sugar, guess where you got to get it from? Your external environment, the, the snacks, the uh, the fruits, the cookies, the the whatevers. And that's when you become like this person who is like, every time you leave the house and it's going to be more than like three hours, you're like, where's my trail mix? And you, you have this like anxiety where like, okay, do I have it? Okay, I'm good to go. And, and just being this person who's like locked, like literally chained to food. You always need to have your snacks with you. Otherwise, you're going to feel miserable, hangry, anxious, and just like, okay. And even jittery when, when you're not able to really have the fuel you need. Because when you're not able to access that carbohydrate, your body's going to be like, okay, let's get some fat out or, you know, try to release what carbohydrates are in your body. And it will crank up the sympathetic nervous system. And leaving you in a place of where when you're not able to fix those issues, then you're on the snack train here again. And when you're on the snack train, it is just burning the candle at both ends because the carbohydrate metabolism gets used more and more and more and then it actually will start to break down and get rusty just like gears or um, machinery or cogs that haven't had oil poured on them in a while they get rusty they stop working but guess what when they get worse and worse they get less and less efficient that increases the demand all right it's just like imagine if you were going down a slip and slide if it's really oily, really slippery, you just go right on down. But when, you know, it's it's not, you need to kind of like, I guess you would really need to push yourself harder and, and all this stuff. The, the point is you need to kind of shove more onto it to, to make it work. So using carbohydrate metabolism will actually increase the demand for carbohydrates. It's a really bad positive feedback loop. This is why people become addicted. The binging will happen of where you're going back to the kitchen, you're opening up this pantry, that pantry, looking for something to satisfy this hunger, but not really ever getting there because your body's just asking for more and more and more because it can't be processed and it can't give you the end result of energy to then tell your body to, hey, stop. So that's why people get stuck on snacking. But again, snacking will keep you stuck on snacking. So if you're not able to get your body to a level of where you open up the possibility for fat burning, for your nervous system to calm down, then you're stuck on snacking and, be, and then it becomes a crutch. And it seems like a temporary solution, but it's something that will make things worse and worse. Where you have snacking during the day, and now you may be becoming that person who you need something in the middle of the night to fall asleep. You may wake up hungry because that started in the daytime and now have come over to the nighttime. And when that happens, now that is a dangerous place to be because now your sleep quality is destroyed and not only sleep quality of where you're waking up and that day is already ruined but also for yourself being a place of where we're now weight gain is very real and seeing the the rappers and being a place of beating yourself up for i did it again and having to then be in this place of guilt and shame and really just making things worse and worse so it's a temporary measure, but it does lead downhill to a place you don't want to be. And that is why, like, when we when we work with our clients, when we're repairing whatever may be wrong with them from physical, environmental, and a, and a uh, mental standpoint as well, once that's covered, that's when you're able to get off the stack because you, you fix the machinery and then you're able to get going based on what those individual issues are. That's a my soapbox there. The other piece to this is that, well, it's not really related to this, but mega dosing vitamin B5. 
or pentathenic acid or pentathetine uh, you'll, you'll see sometimes on the bottles. But we'll just keep it the B5. We'll just say that, not a tongue twister. So B5 is something you'll hear where someone has a book out there where you just take lots and lots of B5 for a long amount of time. And the problem with this is it becomes like a, okay, here's this silver bullet. This is gonna work, this is gonna be great. And it may, may not. And it's definitely gonna be something where you're not understanding how B vitamins work. B vitamins are kind of like this, this balanced system from B1 all the way down to B12. And if you wanna count PQQ as B13, you can go ahead and do that. But point being, if you're mega dosing one, it will consume and deplete you of the others. So that's one thing. But here's the truth. Apparently this still works for some people. So there's something to it. What is going on? When you look at pantothenic acid or B5, there's something pretty cool attached to it. Cysteine. What is so important about cysteine? Why am I talking with this natural rhythm and metronome? If you're thoroughly annoyed, I'm sorry, but the answer is cysteine is one of the first amino acids whenever a protein is being made, okay? And that's really important because the more cysteine you have available, you're able to make more proteins more efficiently instead of inefficiently using the old ones. And cysteine, higher cysteine concentrations inside your cell actually enhance the ability of your cells to tell time. So this is why I think mega dosing vitamin B may work for some people. It is not what we do with our clients because reliably I've seen this fail more times than it succeeds. But that is why that may work because it's almost a band-aid in, in terms of fixing the, the timing of everything and having everything nice and efficient inside of the cell. But there's those better, more powerful ways. That's what we cover when we're working with our clients over the weeks and get into a point of where, you know, they're more powerfully in to this alignment without all the other problems of depleting the other B vitamins, of being dependent on a supplement, of not really even fixing the real issue. Because this is the equivalent of your, your car is falling apart again and you just decided to buy premium fuel. And maybe you run a little bit better for a little bit longer, but I have not seen many people where there's like, oh yeah, that, that fixed me right away. And if it was, there would not be, well, I wouldn't have a business. Two, there wouldn't be groups of tens of thousands of people who just don't have the answer to this. this it, it would be literally just that simple because there's so many other things going on and you can never just hone it down on one thing because when you do that's when you get into a, a habit i call it one thing itis you go from this thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing and you're just like trying things out and trial and error can take over years and bring you to a point of where you say i just i just accept it i'm just managing oh and, you know i've been going through this so long but you're, there, there is not gonna be that magic bullet. There isn't. Don't let them fool you. Don't let the, the next book, the next podcast. It's not that simple. There's a whole ecosystem of problems that many of them, most of them, you're not even aware of. And so many things you're doing now, I hate to say it, but that's, many times I find that's hurting our clients or where we're looking in, in some of our first sessions, okay, what are you doing? Okay, we need to take some of this out because it's actually hurting you. Hurting your cells in terms of its ability to actually function as it should. And I would actually put mega dosing B5 in that category of where, yeah, you may get temporary improvements, but when it's not the whole fix, things are just going to come back down again. They always do. It's the gravity of healing. So, Again, not something I would go, and really this and like all the other silver bullets to be avoided. Now, question number five here is, what if I just relax or I de-stress? Yeah, because you'll hear this a lot. Go on vacation, take off of work for a month and worry about how hard it is for you when you're gonna be back to work or when you go back to work and you realize you have to take time off again and how unsustainable it is and all of that. 
So yeah, go ahead and relax. Try, try to relax. But here's the thing. It sounds great because your body can't handle stress. Your adrenals are stressed out. They're pumping out cortisol and adrenaline. But here's the thing. Life is always going to throw crap at you. And having to take a month off and getting to a certain level when you don't know what you're really like targeting and doing, guess what? When life happens again, right back down, right back down to where you were before. And instead of actually rebuilding your body, you're just letting it get to a place of where it reaches this new equilibrium of getting by, survival mode. There may be less stressors, but you'll always find something to be stressed out about when your adrenals are toast. Because that's the physiological state that you're in. Okay? When someone with adrenal fatigue stubs your toe, yes, you're tired, but also more of the, you know, those catecholamines that are taking over, those are making you more frustrated, more angry just from the get-go. So even without work, you're going to find other things that are going to stress you the frick out. Like how many times, like, when you think about your health and how that shows up with how you're inter interacting with other people, is it in the morning where you're just, like, grumpy and everyone knows to not speak with you? Or maybe you don't have anyone at home. When you're out in the real world at, like, 9, 10 a.m., you're just like, no one speak to me. No one speak to me. Or maybe you're like that at work. Either way, it's because of all the 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 chemicals going on inside your body. And then you're getting home and now you're irritable with people at home. Or you're just irritable by yourself and having a life with absolutely no joy in it whatsoever. So that doesn't necessarily go away when you relax or de-stress. And here's the other thing. When you relax and de-stress, now you have more time to take the mental framework of things that have failed for you in the past and keep applying that to other things. And you're bringing more things. Now I have time for my breath work. Now I have time for this stuff and that stuff. Or the, I'm going to do colonics now. I'm going to do. But those are just more times to stuff with like one things. All the one thing itis. It's like when you have a, you know, a, a big sort of jar you need to fill up. And you're just trying to put these little tiny pebbles in it to try to get it all the way up. That's what certain people will do when they have more time. But this is why I'll speak to people who, I mean, they're on disability. And they have... I mean, still have stuff to do, but a lot more time when you're not having 40, 50, 60 hours a week of work. Now, obviously, you want to work and be able to support and create a life. I got you. But even then, eight hours of self-care, if you don't really know what you're doing, you're not going to really get there. It's like if something broke down, if your fridge broke down, and if you had 80 hours to fix it, I don't think you could do it. That's why people go to refrigerator school and our mechanics and learn how these things work and work with the manufacturers and learn and they can come home, come into your home and then just, you know, charge you 800 bucks for 20 minutes of work because they know what they're doing. And so when you're just having more of this time, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get more results because you don't have the right tools. And now you're back into this loop of, I take time off, I try to get better, I didn't get better, now I'm back to work. And you're just extending this loop of just hamster wheel existence. And then the other piece of this is that, like we talked about before, just relaxing, you're taking your mitochondria to a place of where now they're even less able to have a hormetic response. They cannot rebuild in response to a stressor. So you're really just making them weaker and weaker in your capacity for life, weaker and weaker. And it may not be something of where you cut out things or maybe you're managing and carefully planning each and every single thing you're doing. But when that's the case, that's you're just not getting anywhere. So you can relax and distress. Is it going to fix your issues? No, it's not. You got to have so much more to get your body to a point where you can take on the stress and get better and have a smile on your face staring at it. That's how that all works. Now the... Other question is, is very related to this is adrenal extracts. So, you know, bovine, porcine, all that good stuff. So, or herbs as well. So this is something of where, okay, cool. You can take these. But the moment you're like reaching for these, or maybe your naturopath has told you, you've just been like, okay, we're going to try this supplement. It sounds great, straightforward. And you may get a little bit of a boost. But I have never heard someone once ever say, yeah, that adrenal extract just change everything forever, I'm good. They may work for a little bit. You may see that positive comment in a post somewhere, but guess what? 
find those comments from two years ago, reach out to that person and see how they're doing. It's the same story. Oh yeah, it started working, I was getting hopeful, and then right back to where I was. Didn't really work for me. Because so many times when you see a positive thing online, it's that person getting that quick hit, that quick fix to something that's a huge, huge, big issue. So yes, you may get a temporary bump, but do you want a life of Band-Aids or do you want a life fully supported without all these crutches? That's really what it's about. And when you're using these crutches like this one specifically, I wanted to highlight, you're disrupting the negative feedback loop, which I uh, did a post on earlier. And essentially when you do that, you're disrupting your adrenals abilities to actually function as they should of where they're now atrophying. They're not producing cortisol as they should. And now you're hooked on one of these supplements. And guess what? Do you know why your adrenals have shut down? It's to protect your mitochondria. You may want to write that down. Your adrenals have shut down to protect your mitochondria. Glory be, who would have thought? So if you turn it back on artificially by dumping in these chemicals, guess what happens? your mitochondria will get more and more damaged. Chemically, you may be fine and supported, but that's why people will go downhill. That's why people get stuck. That's why other issues can pop up as well or not change whatsoever. So when you're doing the adrenal extracts, it's a holding pattern and then you're gonna be right back on the plane ride to adrenal fatigue down. That's what happens. Because you should be able to have your adrenals functioning naturally because your mitochondria are great and doing fantastic and being able to support your whole system and physiology here. <coughs> because when you're reaching for the, the supplements, you're doing all like these all this excessive lab testing, it's showing that you don't really know or your practitioner doesn't really know where this is going. Because adrenal fatigue is something you should be able to overcome within weeks, not months or years. It's not. It's simple, it's straightforward, but here's the thing, it's not easy. Where all those factors I'm talking about, lifestyle, your environment, so many of these physical factors, it takes work, it takes dedication and consistency. Now you don't need to quit your job to do it, but you have to be someone who realizes that if you're just gonna grind and just have all these band-aids, you cannot keep living that half-life like that. You cannot. Because you don't want to get to a point of where, I mean, each and every single day, you just have grinded your nose to the, the ground so much that that's just the life you begin to accept and the example you're setting. Because you did not come on this earth to be someone who's held together by all these band and just gets all the way through your life and your life is one big to-do list, but actually living is a box you never get to check. So what's possible for you is to be free of all these supplements of not having to ask any of these questions and be able to be someone who can be just like many of our clients who do the work and get to a level of where they can have a life not dependent on all these supplements not having to carefully manage all their you know their, their diets and their and their routine and being able to be in a place of where no matter what stress is coming in your life whether it's the next pandemic or something at work or or something at home you know your body can take it because you, if you don't have your health, you literally have nothing else. Even if you have an illusion of going to work, having the home, having the mortgage, going on vacation, if you can enjoy it at all, what is the point? You deserve to have life of where you can have it all, including your health, and be able to have really everything. But it starts with being able to have the power in your own body and owning it fully, because then you can fully own your life. And if that's what you want, then here's what my team and I have in store for you. So in the next, I think two days, we have some spots on our calendar where we're gonna open that up and be able to chat with you about how you can go from you know, asking these sorts of questions to being able to have your solutions in terms of what are all the things going wrong with me? How can I be able to be in a spot of where you know I wanna be able to actually be free of all these supplements and be in a position of where I am living my life again. So what we'll do, get together 45, 60 minutes and we'll get clear on a few main things. One, what's not working and why? The obstacles to your health goals. And three, the way to get there, what that path looks like. And if that's something we can help you out with, 
then we will cover that. And if not, we will wish you on your way and point you to whatever else is going to work the best for you. Because this call is all about you. And it's not just the you here. That part of you who's had enough, who is not willing to settle for less or the same stagnation you've been in. And you know that there is life where you can be energetic, vibrant, engaged, and present each and every single day because it's a choice. A choice to break through all of this. And so that's why I'm offering you the choice of claiming your free breakthrough call here. So go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk and you'll see a calendar and there you will pick a time and then you fill out a form and then we will call you then. Hey, hello. And that's pretty much it. And we'll go on that deep dive. We'll see what's going on. We'll see what those issues are. And if you're the person who can fix them with us and if that's a fit, then we'll walk through exactly how we can help. But make no mistake, this is not some informational call where we do like a razzle-dazzle dance for you. It's really like, okay, we know we have a system that works. Are you going to be the person that has the problem that fixes and, and do the work? Because if you are, then you will be that person who can look at all the silly questions on forums and laugh at them too. Because it's a good feeling to have that you're on the other side and that these people can also be on the other side. So go ahead. Get your breakthrough, optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Hey, everyone. This is Dr. Dylan Peckis. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and then book your free breakthrough call. Either type in the link or click the button. Whatever works for you. Thanks.